Hello, it's Brent Shared Leverage and Lean, and today is Monday, which means it's Macro Monday. And I can't think of a better way to start out your week than being more efficient and effective on your computer. And the best way to do that is use our latest macro. What kind of macro are we posting this morning? Let me show you. All right, this is the macro we're dropping this morning. This is a word macro that will copy multiple documents into one. Have you ever been in a scenario where you're working with multiple documents and you need to quickly combine them into one? Say for example, you're working with a team and each team member is assigned to a part of the paper, the beginning, middle, and end. Once each part is done, you would have to open each word document, select the content within them, and then paste them into the original document. Fortunately, with VBA, you can do this in just one click. This macro helps open all of those Word documents, copies the content within them, and then pastes them into one document. This macro is great because it helps you delegate more work knowing that you can combine everything quickly once everything is complete. If you've yet to see this macro in action, check out our See It In Action video here. And as we continue to work our way down, here is the code that is going to do all the work for this macro. But one part I want to refer to is the first time using VBA. If you've yet to activate the developer tab, update your macro security, and set up references for leverage and lean macros, you need to do this. And let me show you how fast you can complete all three of these steps. I'll just navigate to Word, go up to Customize Quick Access Toolbar, go to More Commands, and then Customize Ribbon. Looking over at the main tab section, you can scroll down and see the developer tab is unchecked. Go ahead and checkmark that and click OK. You'll now see you have a tab for the developer. You can then navigate over to macro security, and then within macro security, you see all of your macros are disabled without notification. Go ahead and enable all of them. It's not recommended because potentially dangerous code could run, but in this video, I'm going to show you each line of code and walk through it step by step so you know exactly what you expect to happen. My best advice is to never blindly run code if you don't know what it's going to do. All right, so once this is done, you can go ahead and open Visual Basic, and then within Visual Basic, you're gonna navigate over to Tools to look at the references, and the only two references that you care about are Visual Basics for Application and Microsoft Word with the object library indicated there. The normal reference is not required for this macro to work. I just have this set up on my personal device because I'm using macros across multiple Word documents. All right, while we're in Visual Basic, let's go ahead and create a module so we can get the code into Word. You can drop down this black arrow and then click Module, and now you have the availability of Module 1. Let's navigate back and copy the code in here. To do that, just go ahead and double click between the code line and the physical code itself. You can quickly select all of the code and then navigate back over to Visual Basic and paste that in. So what I want to do is show you what this macro is going to do, just walking through it line by line. So you can see the active Word document I'm working in is blank, but once this macro runs, it's going to look to the folder path where this Word document is saved, and you can see there's multiple Word documents at the same folder path. The macro is then going to loop through each one of these and then pull in the content within them. I can show you this by walking through this macro with F8, we're going to indicate the active Word document I currently have open is the master document where all of the content from each one of these Word documents is going to get pasted in. As we continue to work our way down, this is where you're going to indicate do you want the content from each one of those Word documents to be pasted at the end of the Word document or at the beginning? You can simply indicate and change this. The default is to paste at the end, but you can either remove this code line and then use the code line above it to paste at the start of the document. And then we're going to indicate the folder path of the active document to loop through all of those Word documents. And this is where the looping starts to happen within that folder. So what we want to make sure is that each file type that we're opening is a Word document, which is indicated with this segment of code here, that we're not opening the active Word document, which is indicated with this section of code here, and finally not opening the lock document, which is identified with this code segment here. And then once we've identified a document that meets that criteria, we're then going to attempt to open it. And what I want to do is make this separate Word document visible by changing false to true. You can now see that we've opened another Word document here. We're going to activate it. We're going to select the entire story. And 
and then we're going to copy it. Then we'll close that separate document, activate the master document, which was the original document we ran this macro from, and then we're going to insert the text into that document. And then we'll move on to the next file. And as you can see by the folder path, there are five Word documents we expect to pull in after running this macro, and I'll go ahead and show you what that looks like here. So once this macro is done running, you get a nice message box saying that multiple Word documents have been copied into this one. You can see by looking at the active Word document, we've pulled in content from all five of those documents found at the folder path. I'm also inserting this text here to indicate where the content has come from, just in case you haven't set up the documents to pull in the correct order. You can see that I put in a leading number to ensure that happens. You can then simply just drag and drop and move the content where it needs to go. This is a feature you can easily exclude if you just navigate back into the code and then look for this code line here. You can simply delete this to ensure that does not pull in. But if you're combining multiple Word documents, it could be helpful to see where all the content is coming from. All right, the last thing I'll show you how to do to really get the most out of this macro is set up a quick access button to fire this macro on command. You can do that by navigating back into Customize Quick Access Toolbar, go to More Commands, and then Customize Ribbon. And then what we're going to do is create a new tab, and then we're going to name that tab Macros. And then under the new tab, there is a new group. We'll go ahead and clear out the name for that or update the name to whatever you please. And then with the new group selected, drop down popular commands and navigate to macros. And then within macros, go ahead and pull in the copy multiple Word documents from your project module one. You can then rename this to look a lot nicer and then put in spaces to ensure that looks good as well. And then pick an icon you want to display for this macro. You'll now see you have a new custom tab, macros, with a custom group and a custom button to fire this macro with one click. I do have a customized section you can look at to see, as I indicated, you can paste from the start of the master document or at the end of the document. By default, this is the end but you can remove code line 16 and instead replace it with code line 15 to paste the beginning. The folder path by default is the active document, but if you want to navigate to a different folder path that has other Word documents, you can update this code line with that string to that folder path. You can also remove the content indication by removing code line 35, and instead of getting that source of the content, you just get the content without any indication. And then finally, the message box, you get it again, letting you know the macro has been completed. Secret, I remove all the message boxes from these macros, but I like to put them out there just so you have something to work off of. I don't like to have that extra click, and if you don't either, you can simply just remove it. All right, I absolutely want to know what you think of this new word macro, copy multiple documents into one. Thanks so much for watching. Stay awesome. Thank you so much for taking time to view this video. I really do appreciate it. If you want to start using the macro of seen in the video, I have a link in the description. If you could do me another big favor, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Stay updated on any new videos that I'm posting. Like us, follow us on all of our other social media channels. And as always, stay awesome.